Hi everyone, my name is Lawrence. Today I will be exploring the topic benefits of exclusive enteral nutrition in adults with complex active Crohn's disease. This is a case series of 13 patients coming from the Royal Adelaide Hospital. We'll start by defining what is Crohn's disease. It is a chronic relapsing inflammatory disease that could affect any segment of the GI tract. It is caused by the dysregulated immune response to the host intestinal microflora. Despite the introduction of newer biological agents, corticosteroids are still frequently used as first-line therapy in acutely unwell adults with active Crohn's disease. However, corticosteroids carry a merit of side effects. This includes weight gain, fluid retention, glucose intolerance, and psychological side effects. We could see why alternative therapies with fewer side effects are desirable. Exclusive enteral nutrition, or EEN, is an established first-line treatment option in pediatric Crohn's disease. EEN involves providing all of the patient's nutritional requirements via a liquid formula, typically over a six to eight weeks period. Recent studies using EEN in adult Crohn's disease have demonstrated benefits such as mucosa healing, healthy weight gain, improved vitamin D levels, and improve bone health. Additionally, some studies have shown that EEN can help resolve enterocutaneous fistulas and inflammatory strictures, hence avoiding the need for surgery. The main drawback is poor patient tolerance, which can be negated with the newer and more palatable formulas and education. Given the benefits and lack of clinically significant side effects, the Royal Adelaide Hospital initiated a more proactive use of EEN since 2016. This case series aims to evaluate the outcomes when EEN is used in adults with active complex Crohn's disease. Between December 2016 and June 2018, patients with active Crohn's disease who were able to tolerate at least two weeks of EEN were included in this study. Patients were selected to receive EEN by their gastroenterologists and subsequent discussions in a IBD meeting where it consists of colorectal surgeons, IBD nurse specialists, radiologists, psychologists, and dietitians. All of the patients received EEN exclusively by mouth, not through any nasogastric tubes. Of the 15 patients that were offered, two cases were excluded because one reported poor tolerance based on previous experiences. The other was a pregnant woman who felt that she would not be able to tolerate EEN during her pregnancy. This leaves us with 13 patients included in this study. Of the 13 included patients, Seven were male, six were females. Their age ranged between 20 and 74 years old. They all received a median duration of six weeks of EEN. We now move on to explore the indications and the patients who received EEN. Three of them were patients with large complex abscesses. They were not amenable to interventional radiology drainage, and we were hoping to avoid immunosuppression from the corticosteroids. With EEN, all three collections resolved. However, we do acknowledge the fact that these patients are also on broad spectrum IV antibiotics. Another three patients had Crohn's disease that was refractory to multiple medications and their disease were also too extensive for surgical resection. All three patients symptomatically improved, and it served as a really good bridging whilst awaiting for alternative therapies. There were two perianal fistulas in patients with active Crohn's disease. Both of their Crohn's disease settled. One of them 
had their perianal fistula treated with a cetin and it resolved after its removal. The other patient who had perianal fistula subsequently required a left hemicolectomy and a protectomy two weeks post EEN. EEN was stopped postoperatively. He did develop a presacral collection which required interventional radiology drainage. There was one case of an enterocutaneous fistula and also another case of an iliocolic fistula, both radiologically resolved on repeat CT scans after six weeks of EEN. Of the 13 patients included in this study, 46% experienced healthy weight gain with a median of 3.6 kg. Nine out of 13 of them experienced subjective improvement in well-being and also objectively had an increase in serum albumin and decrease in C-reactive protein. We acknowledge that there are limitations with this study. It is a case series that is retrospective in nature. There were confounding factors such as IV antibiotics and corticosteroids, and also there was no statistical analysis to back up our findings. However, our real-world data shows that in selected patients, EEN can decrease inflammatory markers, lead to healthy weight gain, and also increase serum albumin. In certain cases, such as large complex abscesses that were not drainable by interventional radiology or iliocolic fistulas, EEN seems to be able to help some patients avoid the need for surgery. We hope this data encourages more clinicians to consider the use of EEN in adults with active Crohn's disease. There is also a need for more larger RCTs to evaluate its role. Some possible indications of EEN includes preoperative optimization and in cases where immunosuppression is contraindicated. Thank you everyone for their time and attention. We will now move on to the Q&A section.